coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, VidCode. I'm Zoe Falls and welcome to Mobile Learning in the Classroom. Today we're going to look at not an app, um, we're going to look at a website. It's vidcode.io and I actually found this website through a newsletter that I got and it talks about ways to get teenagers into coding, which is a big push in a lot of after school programs and they're trying to find ways to get different audiences interested in coding. This one specifically is targeted towards girls, um, but there are plenty of features in it that will appeal to everyone. So you go ahead and you can sign up for free. And I already set up my account. And one of the things that I liked when I was going through is you can code Pokemon Go. And if you watch some of our previous episodes, you'll see that we did one on Pokemon Go. So this actually teaches JavaScript and it walks you through step by step what's going on. So on the left hand side you see the directions and it gives you this preview picture of what's actually going to be created. In the middle you see the actual code so you get to see what it looks like. And then over on the right hand side they give you some preloaded graphics, audios, and videos. But if you notice you also have this option to upload your own file. So if you're doing this in a classroom or you're doing this with some friends, you can go out and make your own videos, create your own content to then go through and do the coding. So for students, they really get to take ownership of what's going on and they really get to be a part of this process and they get to be creative and go through the coding process. So we're going to go ahead and start and we're going to do the augmented reality Pokemon project. So again, augmented reality is also a really innovative thing you're starting to see in schools and they get to see the world and then there's an overlay of some sort of graphic on top of it. All right, so it starts with videos and I'm going to go ahead and use one of their sample videos and go to the beach. So it tells you on your first step to choose a video. So I'm going to select my video and as you see over in that right hand corner it shows me what my code is doing and then I get to see the written code where it says movie.play. So it's telling me that movie is the object and dot .play is the action. So then I'm going to say next and then add Pokemon. So I'm going to go over to my graphics and again you can upload a file so if you have students that have pictures of Pokemon from wherever or you know they don't want to catch Pokemon they can catch something else, they can catch their friends, catch their pet. Um, they can upload a picture of that, but I'm going to go ahead and choose Pikachu and as you see Pikachu shows up on top of my water video. So I tell it next. Now it's going to show me how to edit and this is where they actually get to start typing in their code and in the red text it tells them exactly what it is. So if I say Pokemon, which again is my, the object, and then I say dot rotation. So I'm telling it I want it to rotate and then I want to rotate it 30 degrees. And if you notice, it'll highlight the line of code if I'm not doing it correctly. So it walks me through step by step what I need to do. So I can also scale it so I can make them smaller. And let's make him half the size. So as you see it shrunk him. I can also make him bigger. Look, giant Pikachu. All right, so let's go back, make him small. And I can change his opacity so I can make him fade into the background a little bit more. So Pokemon dot opacity and we'll do eight. So he's still pretty visible, but kind of fades in the background a bit. And again, it tells you once you've made the changes you want, and I would encourage you to have, have your students try different things. Try to, try, you know, give them tasks. Can you make Pikachu stand on his head? Um, and tell them to go through the code and just try things until it works because it shows you live what's actually happening. So if we say next, jump around. Okay, so for those of you that have done other coding things in classrooms, I know I've seen it in elementary schools where there are different types of 
codes where you just drag in the super complicated coding that they might not be ready for yet, they have that option too. So it's telling me to drag the jump around code in. So I just click and drag and drop. And Pikachu is now dancing across the screen. But again, I can read the code. So if you're teaching this live with your students, you can go through the code and talk about OK, based on what we learned with situating Pikachu, what can you tell me about this piece of code? Why is it functioning the way it is? And then we'll go ahead and say next. Then, it, you know, it, again, it encourages them. So the students can do this independently because the software walks them through. So let's select the Pokeball. So I'm going to add in my Pokeball. There it is. And now it's going to give me options, again, to rotate my Pokeball. So again, I'm, I'm typing in the object, Pokeball, and I want it to scale. And I want it to scale to, uh, let's make it a little smaller. Here we go. And I want to keep the opacity. That's good. And so now mouse tracking. So I'm dragging in my mouse tracking. And as you see, I have my mouse over on the Pokeball. And that's what's moving the ball around. So again, you can go down and talk to your students, walk them through the code and try to see if they can problem solve through and think critically about what that code is doing and how it's functioning in this video that they're creating. So go ahead and say next. So now we can score the game. And again, for kids and students that are familiar with Pokemon Go, the, the logic of walking them through this process is going to be easier because they've played the game. They've experienced it. So now they're sort of seeing the, the back end of how Pokemon Go works. So we'll go ahead and drop in score. And again, if you scroll down, it tells you the score. And you can see that in the upper right-hand corner. And now we're going to customize score again. So in this one, they can change the color. So we're going to make it green. And we're going to, oh, OK. So if you notice, my score didn't change color. It's because my code isn't right. I selected my object, but I didn't tell it what I wanted to do. I want it to color. See, so now it, now it turned green. So again, have your students be aware. Is it changing? Is it doing what you thought it was going to do? And if it's not, have them problem solve through how to fix it. And let's go ahead and make the score a little smaller. Score text. And let's do size. And let's make it it's 35. There we go. OK, so you can change font and other things. But I'm good with the font that it shows. So I'm going to go and say next. So game logic. So mouse collision. Again, even before you transfer the code in, you can have them think through what they're going, what the code is going to do. So based on mouse collision and the Pokemon Go game, have the students think through what is this piece of code going to do? How is it going to function in the game? And then have them actually drag it in. And then you can see the code. And it's actually the part that makes when you get the Pokeball on Pikachu which I'm not doing very well, it shows that collision. So that's what it's doing. It's saying when your object clicks on the moving object, it counts the score. So then we'll say next. And so now it's actually telling them, go ahead and play around with it. See if you can catch Pikachu. Here we go. Got him once. And then say next. OK, so now caught text. We're going to throw in another piece of code. And again, we can change the font color. So caught text dot color and yellow. And let's do caught text font. Let's change that. And let's change the size.
And as you see, they have multiple ways of engaging with this code. They're learning the pre-given code, and then they're able to type in their own code and see it happen live. And our size is going to be 35. All right. So then we'll say next. And then win game, we'll drag that in. And that'll show you when you win the game. All right, so now we have our Pokemon game. And I actually have one that I already pre-made. So go to my profile, because you can save the ones you make. So if you have content that you put in yourself, you can save it. So this is one I made. And my text of Cottom shows up, Pokemon catching them. If I get to five, it'll show me my windscreen. Come here, Pikachu. There we go. And so your students have just gone through and they've completed coding. Um, so there are different projects you can do within this. There are different creating ones. It'll walk you through what it is. So you can do stop motion. You can make your own filter, make a meme, doodle augmented reality. And then there are obviously ones to pay for. There are ways to get a school account. Um, and it'll show you what they're thinking about bringing in next. So some Python, virtual reality, 3D graphics. So again, it's a really nice, fun way to get kids interesting in coding. They get to see the power of what that coding does in an environment that's similar to something they already know. So this has been Video Code, and it's videocode.io. And thank you for your time.